So this lecture we go back to the operational amplifiers chapter, chapter 9. The last three lectures we were looking at stability and compensation. Before those three lectures we had looked at op amps that had a gain of the order of GMRO the whole squared. We had looked at actually three different configurations at that time. The telescopic cast code, folded cast code and the two stage op amp. Now let us look at configurations that give an even higher gain and we are talking about a gain of GMRO cubed. Uh, there are two preferred configurations for getting such a gain. One configuration is a telescopic cascode differential amplifier followed by a common source amplifier. This is of course what you are designing in assignment 4. Uh, so this the telescopic cascode gives a gain of GMRO squared followed by the common source which gives a GMRO. So the overall gain is GMRO cubed. So because you are very familiar with both of these and you are designing it, we will not spend any time discussing this in class. Uh, one homework I am giving you is for this two stage op amp with a telescopic cascode first stage. If you short the output to the negative input, put it in unity gain feedback, then find the output voltage swing of the op amp. Alright, you have done enough swing calculations that you should be able to do this on your own. Also note that for getting a GMRO the whole cubed, one could use a telescopic cast code followed by a common source or a folded cast code followed by a common source. But we have seen before in lectures 28-29 that given a choice, a telescopic cast code has a better performance compared to the folded cast code in practically every aspect. And therefore, if one wants to build a two-stage ampl amplifier like this, one never ever uses a folded cast code differential amplifier as the first stage. All right. Okay. So the second, so this is one telescopic cast code followed by a common source. The uh, second configuration that is used uh, often is a cast code with regulation. Uh, Razavi uses the word gain boosting uh, for the word regulation. I tend to prefer the word regulation. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss a folded cast code op amp with regulation. To begin, uh, we uh, uh, look at a current uh, mirror that we had looked at in lecture 19, slide 7. It was called a regulated cascode current mirror. So let us begin with that uh, circuit. Uh, so that circuit if you recall, so there was a basic current mirror M0, M1 and then M1, M2 formed a cascode and then we added an M3 which is a negative feedback around M2 which increased the overall output resistance to gm squared ro cubed right the output resistance of simply m1 m2 is gm ro squared but when we add this common source amplifier in the feedback path then the resistance becomes gm squared ro cubed now suppose we replace this irf and m0 suppose we remove this and if we apply an input voltage here at the gate of M1, then this circuit with the input here and the output here is a, an amplifier that has a gain of the order of GM cubed, RO cubed. All right. Now again, so that is this circuit. So we have replaced the current source with an input voltage. This is called a telescopic cascode with regulation and amplifier and uh, the gain is GMRO the whole cubed. Now this is a simple circuit to analyze so I am not analyzing it as homework. Please derive the small signal voltage gain of this amplifier. It will have the primary term will be GM cubed RO cubed and there will be other terms also of the order GMRO squared and all that. 
so now so this is the amplifier now you want to use this basic structure to build a an op amp an op amp that gives a gain of gmro cubed so let us see how to go about it uh, first thing is this is a current source so we have to replace this current source with a bunch of transistors uh, that will provide a real life load so what kind of current mirror or source do we need here so that the gain stays gmro cubed and we've discussed this for the telescopic uh, well for the cascode configuration before so let's kind of just revise this so if you look at this and if you look at the output resistance from this node then the output resistance is a parallel combination of r down looking down from vo and r up looking up from vo r down as we know from our current mirror discussion is of the order of gm squared r o cubed now i load can be implemented either as a single tmos transistor or it can be implemented as a cash code if it is a single tmos transistor its resistance will be ro if it's a cash code its resistance will be gm ro squared in either case the r out from this node will then be r up parallel r down and because r down is much higher compared to ro and gm ro squared the parallel combination of r up and r down will simply be r up because r down is much much greater than r up and so the output resistance will be ro or gm ro squared depending on if this current source is a pmos or a cas code and therefore the gain voltage gain of the circuit will be this or this multiplied by gm so it will be gm ro or gm square ro squared neither of which is what we desire from our regulated cas code because we want a gain of gm cubed ro cubed therefore this i load also has to be implemented as a regulated cas code so that its resistance is also of the order of gm squared ro cubed all right so let us draw the circuit uh okay you draw it uh please pause and draw it uh and then continue it's a so drawing actually is uh, as circuits get complicated uh, as they do in this lecture it is very important to just learn to draw them in fact most of this just lecture is just about drawing circuits that's all we are going to do throughout this lecture okay so here is the circuit so this bottom part is the same as the previous slide m1 m2 m3 on top so the way we draw this is of course this is pmos because it's on the top so we first draw cas code telescopic cas code which is m5 m4 and then around m5 the cas coded transistor we collect a common source amplifier so the the source of m5 is input to the gate of the common source amplifier and the output of the common source is fed back to the gate of m5 that of course is exactly what's happening here also the source of m of m2 is fed to m3 and the output of m3 is fed back to the gate of m2 so now this is a single ended regulated telescopic cas code amplifier but as we saw when we discuss the telescopic cas code uh, itself it does not make a good uh, op amp uh, because of the voltage uh, output voltage swing limitations under unity gain feedback and the same will apply here because in in uh, in the fundamental structure this is still a cas code telescopic cas code we've just added to the telescopic cas code so let us uh, discuss folded cas code so what we'll do is instead of a regulated telescopic cas code now we switch to a regulated folded cas code so let us first draw the folded cas code all right so this is the telescopic regulated cas code now let us first draw for this with 
an ideal current source load a folded cascode with regulation so you draw it first and then continue pause and continue okay so here is the folded cascode which we have seen before so this is the input a common source stage the output of the common source this is with an n mos this is the output goes to the source of a p mos so this p mos is the common gate stage of the cascode the output is taken here and then the load is a current source which this corresponds to this and we have to have this transistor as we saw in the folded cascode to supply currents to both these branches of the folded cascode configuration this is folded cascode now you want to do regulation on this so what we need to do is around the common gate stage the cascode transistor we connect a common source amplifier the common source amplifier will also be a pmos and what we do is we take the source of the pmos of this pmos connected to the gate of a common source amplifier and the drain of that common source we connect to the gate so this is what it is so we have a common source amplifier source connected to the gate of this drain connected back so this is a folded cascode amplifier with regulation and ideal uh, current sources as loads by the way this run this current source because this is simply a common source amplifier this current source is simply a single transistor here in an nmos here a pmos all right now let us build a differential amplifier with this well no first of all so this blue is the load so we i have replaced this i load with an nmos regulated cascode load so that looks like this so we've seen this circuit uh, just a few slides ago so now this is a single in input folded cascode amplifier with regulation now let us build a differential amplifier with this so for differential we need two such uh, two such circuits and can kind of mirror images of these and then we'll put the input transistors together so Oh, sorry so here are the two circuits this is the same circuit as the previous slide this is a mirror image of this circuit so this is v in 1 and m1 the input is applied here this is the second input applied to m2 and then m2 has a its common gate stage and then the nmos load and everything else right so this is these are now two one input amplifiers now we want to combine these to make a, the input to be a differential amplifier and how do we make the input to be a differential amplifier this m1 and m2 which are common source stages we want to to make a differential amplifier we'll connect a tail current source between the sources of m1 and m2 and then that tail current source itself would be grounded at the other end everything else will remain the same the load remains the same so here it is so we have m1 m2 and the sources of m1 and m2 are connected together and they are connected to a tail current source and then of course the two because now this is a part of one big amplifier we can connect the gates of these two transistors together that the nmos is the gates of the pmos is together the everything else remains the same so this is our folded cascode regulated op amp all right it has two inputs and in fact it has two outputs also if we want vo1 and vo2 it's a naturally a differential input differential output amplifier i tail can be a single transistor or it can be a cascode what determines whether it's a single or a cascode transistor the specification for cmrr or the specification for the common mode gain if we need a very low common mode gain we need the resistance of the tail current to be very high and we'll make it a cascode or a single transistor with a very long length all right this is one possible configuration of a 
regulated for this gas code there is another one to motivate that let us think about uh, this this structure here these these two transistors here so uh, let us rec recognize that because this is a differential amplifier and we are primarily concerned about looking at differential mode input signals because that's what would be applied to this amplifier the output nodes would have the ac signals at the output outputs vo1 and vo2 will be differential if one is positive the other will be negative and similarly therefore the signal at this node will if this is positive this will be negative the ac signal the dcs are of course equal at all these nodes the acs are have opposite signs now if you look at this this is a common source amplifier this is another common source amplifier if the input to this common source amplifier is let's say vx then the input ac input if this is vx then this ac input is going to be minus vx right so we have two common source amplifiers the inputs to them are plus vx and minus vx similarly of course to this pmos pair there is a pmos pair here this is one input this is the other input if this input is vy to this common source amplifier then this input is minus vy to this common source amplifier so one can imagine replacing these two common source amplifiers with a simple differential amplifier and similarly these two common source amplifiers with a differential amplifier and if we do that well what would be the advantage of doing that why would we want to of course it makes sense that it will work to have a differential amplifier but why would one want to replace these with a differential amplifier the advantage that would give is that the common mode signals will get uh, rejected so if the any common mode inputs here and here will be rejected by this differential amplifier which is a good thing so for that reason we look at uh, another configuration of a regulated folded gas code where these two and these two are replaced by differential amplifiers so now we have two differential amplifiers one here and one here note that both of them must have a differential output also this for this particular application a differential amplifier with a single output will not work because what we need is that the input taken from here has an output given here and the input taken from here is an output given here and these are actually complementary or basically opposite in sign so a single output connected to both of these will not serve the function of regulation so both of these have to have a differential or a double ended output all right so now this is a complete folded cas code operational amplifier with regulation and that provides a gain of the order of gmro the whole cubed uh, this circuit is used a lot in uh, actual applications where high gains are required we will not discuss the design or any more details of this circuit Uh, because i think this is for a bit advanced for this course so we leave it at this it is important to learn about this configuration but uh, not the details of the design of this configuration uh, let us very quickly look at uh, oh yeah no one thing i do want you to do the only thing i want you to do is do a detailed dc analysis of this circuit Uh, and for doing that uh, so you assume our usual threshold voltage is of 0.4 volts overdrives of 0.2 volts for all transistors and if we assume these then vg3 and vg9 so let's look at so vg3 will be so vdd is 3 volts so 3 minus 0.4 minus 0.2 so this is 2.4 volts and this is 0.4 plus 0.2 so 0.6 volts so vg3 is 0. 2.4 vg9 is 0.6 volts uh and this we already saw uh what i want you to do as homework is determine the ranges of dc voltage is allowable at all nodes in the circuit all right so let's look at the 
so starting with the inputs and i'm saying dc so that means that the input voltages will be equal so v in 1 equal to v in 2 find the range of voltages for which this circuit will work as an amplifier find the range of volt voltages at this node so again this and this are equal because we are talking uh, dc or therefore common mode voltages so the range of voltages at this node the range of voltages at this node the range of voltages at this node and remember that when you find the range of voltages at this node and this node and this node and this node you not only need to think about these transistors but you also need to include the effect of the transistors inside these differential amplifiers all right so it will in fact it will be good if you draw the circuit with a differential amplifier here another differential amplifier here and then find the ranges of all the dc voltages in the circuit so i'm leaving this as homework because i think you've done enough uh, dc voltage analysis to be able to do this on your own now let's quickly look at a frequency response i'm not i'm not saying look at i'm just going to make one comment razavi has briefly discussed the frequency response of this circuit and he kind of concludes from a little bit of uh, mathematics he doesn't do detailed transfer function derivation it does an approximate derivation from which he concludes that the second pole of this circuit of this regulated cas code is usually at a frequency higher than the unit gain frequency of the amplifier and that's a very good thing actually so the frequency response of this circuit is very good uh, contrasted with the two stage op amp that we discussed at the beginning of this lecture which has a cas code first stage and a common source second stage if we compare that with the folded cas code regulated op amp this the second stage of a two stage op amp has actually a rather large uh, uh time constant and a small pole frequency uh because the output resistance at the output of the common source amplifier is reasonably large and so the if we do a comparison of the two configurations the two stage has a poorer frequency response but it has a better output swing uh, to uh, a common source second stage provides the two stage op amp a wide output swing while the regulated this this circuit uh, the output swing is uh, not nearly as high as the common source amplifier all right so that is a distinction so depending on the requirement of the application one or the other configuration are used uh, in um, many many applications okay i want to make another comment about very low vdd op amp so in the last maybe 10 or 15 years circuits are being chips and as uh, systems on chip are being designed with a vdd as low as 1.2 volt and 1.2 volt is very small and for such low supply voltages it actually becomes very difficult to uh, stack four transistors a cas code requires a stack of at least four transistors right so here let's go back so this is called a stack so there's one two three four transistors stacked between ground and vdd now vdd is only 1.2 volts then this stack becomes difficult because of the overdrives taken up by each uh, each transistor leaves very little room for the output to swing so for such low voltage uh, op amps there is actually a whole uh, uh, set of literature just to design low voltage uh, amplifiers but what basically what one has to do is one cannot use cas codes so one just uses simple common source stages and one cascades multiple common source stages to get a high gain uh, so we one may use three stages of uh, three common source stages to get a high gain of the order of gmr cubed now if you have three common source stages each stage will have a pole 
that is about the at about the same frequency so you have three poles at about the same frequency and that makes frequency compensation very uh, difficult uh, and then so as a result many many schemes have been proposed in the literature actually to compensate such op amps uh, I'm sorry this says frequency compensation is easy actually it's very difficult um, ulta sorry is not easy is what I wanted to say all right so okay so this ends this lecture next lecture we'll look at the next section of chapter 9 which is common mode feedback in op amps